Nano Banana has finally been officially released as Google's latest image model, and if you haven't seen the results yet, they are absolutely insane. But there's a lot of questions about how to access this model, and I think a lot of people really getting kind of robbed right now by all these different platforms that are upcharging just to connect to what I'm about to show you today. And that's the backend now natively supported Google Gemini image API node. And so if you are an avid Comfy UI user, one thing you should know is that Comfy UI does support APIs for a lot of these closed source models. So typically when we see a closed source model like Nano Banana or better known as Gemini 2.5 flash image come onto the scene, if we want to use it in Comfy UI, one of the first places we can look is to the blog posts. Comfy is usually pretty quick to act on this stuff, and in this case, that certainly seems to be true. You'll be able to find everything that we're talking about today in the link below on our Patreon, and all of these workflows for today are going to be free. And I think we'll also take a little bit more of a hands-on approach here in terms of integrating um, multiple image uploads. So first and foremost, what you're going to want to do is go up to your manager and then update all. You're going to want to make sure that um, in your logs when your Comfy UI is updating that you see a message that essentially says Comfy UI is running the latest nightly version. And once you've done that, you can come back to your manager and restart, then refresh your page. Once those steps have been completed, you can double tap anywhere on the canvas and just type Google Gemini image and you're going to want to look for the one that's comfy core and so if typically if you're updated to the newest nightly version um, if the API is supported or the new model is supported um, you can typically search for it and see if it's identified as comfy core and that's how you know that comfy UI is supporting that via API or some other method so in this particular case we can see we've got the right model again we're looking for Gemini 2.5 flash image it's known as nano banana but this is the official name so make sure we're not getting that confused and then the rest is pretty simple you put uh, a load image node you find that the exact same way load image connect it to the gemini and then to your preview image and one thing i want to mention really quick is that this says 0.03 per 1000 tokens so at first glance you're it's kind of implied three cents per image with flux context pro when it came out i believe being five cents per image but really quick before we run this generation i just want to point out that i have one dollar and 95 cents here i've switched the image to a different one just because i wanted to test something new and then we've set our prompt as the woman is making a happy expression with a subtle smile and wink at the camera so i will go ahead and run this and i'm going to do this in real time so that you guys can see kind of how fast this api node really is um, i think it's definitely worth the cost just really a for how efficient it is and for these results natively in Comfy UI. This is some pretty insane stuff, especially like keeping all of these details, the eye color is still correct um, relative to the uploaded image. So this is some pretty insane stuff. And then coming back to the pricing, we'll see it's not in fact three cents per image, but a whopping one cent per generation, which is absolutely unbelievable. And I wanted to point out really quick that while that image worked, sometimes it's just kind of random and very picky. I've tried to run this image a handful of times and I continuously run into this result that, you know, it's unable to help me with that. Even though the prompt hasn't changed, the input image really hasn't changed much either. So sometimes you'll still run into these issues, but in that event, you'll notice that you are not losing, um, credit balance in that case which is really awesome to see as well so you're technically getting your refund if the generation fails which you may not be getting on some of these paid platforms so let's go ahead and switch back to our original image and then we're going to try something um, new here we're going to extend this workflow to integrate um, multi-image generation and so the typical way we would do that is to search for an image stitch node typically most people will go with the comfy core we'll stitch that there copy this load image and put that into the second slot then connect this to the google gemini node and so in this particular case we're going to go with this close-up of this kind of road skincare product from a different video that i was working on and we'll change our prompt the woman is holding the pill-shaped product directly in front of her face with both hands and 
and we will send that off. And what you're going to see is a pretty interesting result. Um, sometimes the generation will work, sometimes it won't. Um, in this particular case, it was a little bit of both. We got a new image back, and I think this looks great, but we still have this road skincare, you know, the original loaded image, and we obviously don't want that, right? So the typical way forward from this would be to be like, okay, I'm going to crop out the, you know, additional added image and, and try and streamline it from there. But actually the correct way to load multi images into the Gemini node is to use the batch images core node. And so funny enough, this will actually do the exact same thing as the image stitch. But if we run this again, we'll notice that the output is dramatically different. Um, it does stack the images pretty much the exactly this exactly the same way and sends it to the Gemini API the same way. But when we look at it, we can see that it's much better. But this is actually very bad, interestingly enough. And this is actually something new that I've run into. This looks extremely composited. So even in this particular case, you'll notice that sometimes you still get some bad results. Um, but at, you know, one cent per image, you can go ahead and just run it again before uh, kind of picking on the process I suppose yeah see so on the second run we can see it's a lot better uh, still not quite that pill shape one thing we can do especially if we're doing um, product images is to actually add this remove background node and then before we run this let's take a look at what that would look like okay perfect so not too bad we can see the background has been removed so maybe this will do a better job at seeing the form of the product let's run this one more time interesting when we try and run that we get this error so a little bit of debugging work we can do here well perhaps the alpha is messing with the um, kind of understanding of what's happening in the image so let's turn this to color uh, regenerate that yep looks like it went through and we can see that the form of the product is still much more visible than in the original image so give that just a second to generate a little bit better a little bit better still struggling a little bit with that pill shape but um, yeah, so we can see it's not perfect, um, but it definitely seems to work fairly well, especially with people. I mean, this generation is pretty spot on with the input image. I mean, even the nails, it's its pretty crazy for sure. Even stepping aside from kind of the product side of things. And you could likely go a lot further with this too. I'm sure a lot of this has to do with your prompt. So depending on how big your prompt is, how specific you are with the form of the bottle, um, the form of your character, maybe it could be even better. And here's another crazy one. Um, one thing I want to point out here is even if you're doing just two images, you can also change specific elements within one of those images just by prompting it. So in this particular case, we did, you know, two different images, um, but we're still able to change her sweater from red to blue. And pretty well, might I add, not only did it change the color fantastically, but it also followed the rest of the prompt fairly well. Still missing out on that pill shape, but overall not bad. I'll take it. And we can kind of just keep going on and on like this. If you wanted to add another batch, for example, if you wanted to do a third image, you could duplicate this batch image and load image node, connect the load image to the second image here, and then the batch to the first image, and then connect this here. So in this particular case, let's say we wanted to do a hat. Learning from our mistakes in the past, we're going to add this remove background node back in again keeping the color then we'll change our prompt she's holding the pill shape product directly in front of her face with both hands and wearing the tan hat we'll go ahead and image generate that boom not too shabby whatsoever and that's pretty much it um, it's very very simple to use it's not too shabby whatsoever and you can I kind of haven't found a limit to this yet I imagine probably four or five images is going to be where you're going to start running into some issues but for very simple generations quick edits different poses different expressions this is an absolutely fantastic model and this is for sure one of your cheapest ways to run the model as I mentioned resources are below like the comfy UI blog as well as our patreon post for this video which has the final workflows attached I will add a simple single image load the double image um, and then finally the triple these remove background nodes will also be included and if you are loading an image that doesn't need them you can quite literally just bypass them so thank you guys so much for watching I appreciate your time and I will see you in the next one